set. Uh, why I am the one uh, to speak about that in Creative Valley. So um, I am the one in charge of uh, the growth department for startups in Creative Valley. So uh, all the acquisition and everything, all the funnel uh, to get startup in the program. Okay. So today we are going to speak about three main topics. Uh, so we are going to speak about the product market fit and why it's important to get it before starting any type of uh, digital marketing strategy. After that, we are going to speak about the pirate framework. So uh, how to integrate it into your uh, business and uh, why it is really important to have this in mind into your um, marketing strategy. And after that, we are going to speak about the difference um, around growth marketing and growth hacking because we, uh, we are used to um, listen a lot of different stuff about growth hacking. And uh, we are going to try to, to see what is the real big difference and why these two topics are totally complementary. So let's start. Oh, yeah, just before I forget about this. Next week, you get the machinery, the machinery en français. Um, so it will be a, a workshop about rapid testing. And this is really important. That will be more practical than uh, what I'm doing today. But this is really, really important to have all the funnel in mind before getting to uh, the practical thing with uh, the machinery. So try to be there next week because it, it's going to be really, really, really interesting. Okay? Okay, let's go. So let's start a little bit with the basics. We are going to speak about product market fit. So what is a product market fit actually? Uh, that was a trendy word back in the days, uh, like a couple of years uh, before. Uh, now it's a little bit less trendy, but it's still really, really important. I speak with a lot of entrepreneurs uh, that don't know what is product market fit, uh, but it's a basic to start your uh, digital marketing campaign. So what's the definition of product market fit? It's when there is a meet and a total agreement between a product and a market, like it's a match, all right? for uh, Usama Amar. Uh, I think you all know this uh, big guy that is speaking a lot about startup and everything. Um, a product market fit is physical. Uh, when uh, you get your product market fit, so uh, we will uh, say you are post product market fit, it's violent. Every time you're doing something, uh, ad campaign, uh, a discount on your price, you get 1,000 times what you gave. So it's like violent. And you need to deal with all these new customers coming to your website and you, and you need to give them uh, satisfaction. So it's really, really important. So why uh, in your market, digital marketing campaign, this is important. Because uh, if you are going to do like growth marketing strategy without your product market fit, you are just losing time and maybe losing money if you are paying someone to do it uh, because you will try to optimize your funnel without having the right product that is going to the right target with the right message because this is what product market fit is. So you are just filling a basket uh, that got a hole. So all the water is going to, to drop around, but you don't uh, keep this water, all right? So before everything, think about your product market fit. And I would like to ask any of you, if there is someone just right there today that got or that thinks he got his product market fit. Uh, maybe Chiara, you can tell me if there is someone in the chat that is telling this, uh, and we can discuss about this. Yeah. I'm waiting for someone to volunteer. Yeah, <laughs> we will see. It's actually really, really hard to get his product market fit. And, and it's hard to know. He has a, 
One? Anwar thinks he has a, a mark. Okay. Anwar, you would like to speak? Hello. Hey, Anwar, what's up? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good, thanks. Um, so my first question is, uh, yeah. can, you, can you just sum up in few words what you are doing uh, for the rest of the audience, please? Yeah, so um, we are funding our startup named Niti. Uh, it's, um, in short, uh, so it's city mapper for the emerging markets. <laughs> it, uh, that's the, the most basic form of it. But uh, so what we are trying to do is to provide um, to provide information and journey planning uh, that considers uh, the irregular uh, aspects of uh, the mob the uh, uh, the uh, mobility uh, in uh, emerging markets. So uh, that's uh, that's it. So our main market is uh, African market. So uh, we think. Uh, 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 our test uh, market is Tunisia, and uh, we think that we got the, our market fit because when we started, we started from a problem that we are currently living. So <laughs> in Tunisia, so it's real hustle to to get from point A to point B because information is scarce. Uh, at uh, at rush hours, you can't even find taxis, uh, so it's really messy. So uh, we started from this, and after that, we 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 post a hypothesis that so that we need <laughs> so we need uh, this uh, uh, we need a certain of, of an application on a platform that gives us information about when when is the bus coming, when is the metro coming. Okay. Uh, this is later. thanks thanks Anwar. So this is your solution. Um, yeah. What I would like to know is uh, how do you know you get your product market fit? Because uh, all the startups that are here uh, are solving a problem. Yeah. But uh, I think there is a mic that is open. Yeah, with, uh, with the sound. Uh, so uh, to know you get your product market fit, you need to analyze your data. So exactly, does, yeah. your, uh, does your uh, target understand your message? Uh, what is your uh, conversion rate uh, compares to the conversion rate of your sector? And do you get referral? If you get all that in green light, I agree you get your product market fit. Okay. Do you have, do you have some data? Maybe we can look at it uh, just after these workshops to see if we can say with data that you get your, your product market fit. Okay, so what, what we did is uh, we get to the streets and we ask people about their problems and how they are trying to solve them. Mm -hmm. And that's for, for so we began with that. And after that, we, we conducted another survey where we presented, uh, in short, our, the solution for, our, for some random people on the street who are using public transit, etc. And we asked them if such an application will solve their problem, will they use uh, such an application okay. and and, okay, and we've, we've got so, yeah so we've got some, some huge uh, let's say if no, we yeah, can. Yeah. i see what you mean and uh we will we will discuss about this uh, you and me just after that okay uh, but actually you need to transfer all the data uh, like uh, the survey that you get in real data of users and you can okay. do that with a simple uh matrix so a simple playbook that is like this. I will I will give you this template, uh, so it's pretty easy to do it. But uh, there is a green of Creative Valley, so I like it, and <laughs> you will be able to use it. So, how can you uh, in a, in a fact uh, know that you get your product market fit? So, easy one: your target understand your business. So this is about Google Analytics. Uh, does uh, your bounce rate uh, is higher is really high, sorry about my English, is really high. So if your bounce rate is really high, uh, it means that customers uh, don't understand what you are doing for real. Does your conversion rate is higher than the average conversion rate of your sector? For example, you are launching an e-commerce platform. 
uh, you have to know that uh, in average conversion rate for e-commerce it's approximately three percent so if your conversion rate is three percent you get you get one of the three aspects of the, your product market fit and do you have referral so referral um, is when someone uh, is telling one of his buddies to use your service. So obviously you can change those metrics and take the one that is the most important, not for you, but for your business. For example, you are uh, launching um, an application, an app. Um, so one of the key metrics for you is retention. Uh, I'm thinking about plays, I'm thinking about Firenoon that are in ADNX CFM. So this is social media. If people are not coming back to this uh, application, it won't survive. It won't survive a month because they need retention. So when they get retention and this uh, rate is above the average rate in their sector, so in the social media, they get one aspect of the product market fit. Okay. Um, so now that you know what is product market fit and what it's really important to get it, to not lose time and money, we can talk about growth a little bit. So we are going to start with growth marketing. So this is the pirate framework. Uh, you can call uh, it R, so A-A-R-R-R. -R -R. So this is actually uh, the customer life cycle. Right. Uh, can I, can I ask something? Yeah, of course. Could you just take a minute to try to give us a, a way to be, to find our product market fit? Okay. okay, 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 so I'm coming back. Thanks. Okay, just right there. So um, for, for the first one, there is several ways. Uh, the one that Anwar uh, spoke about is a good one as well. You can go to the streets and, uh, but, Try, try to find your target because actually my uh, father uh, doesn't understand a thing of what I'm doing right there, uh, speaking about gross marketing. But my father is not my core target. My core target is you, actually. So you need to understand what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So you can go find your uh, target, Pitch your project and see if they are uh, understanding everything that you are saying. You can do it so face to face, or you can do it with your Google Analytics. Google Analytics will show you the bounce rate. So the bounce rate is uh, how many people uh, are uh, coming to your website and leaving your website without doing anything, without like clicking on something, putting an email address, anything. So if the bounce rate is really high, it means that people uh, doesn't understand what you are doing. So this is the first thing, conversion rate. It's all about Google Analytics right there. There is another tool like Hotjar and everything, but we are going to speak about basics. So Google Analytics, conversion rates. Um, when you get your um, analytics set up, you can see how many people uh, are going to buy your product, okay? So uh, Antoine, for example, Antoine is uh, selling diamond, synthetic diamond. I think I can say that in English. It's a, a more complex, but we are going to simplify this as e-commerce in uh, diamond, all right? So uh, this is luxury. So I believe that the conversion rate will be uh, less than 3% because this is a mainstream percentage, mainstream percent. Uh, let's say it's 2%, all right? So you are going to analyze your uh, conversion rate and say, okay, my conversion rate is 0 0.5. And the average rate for diamond and luxury is two. So you get, a, you get a problem in your conversion. So you need to change maybe your message, maybe your price, maybe your target to get to the average rate in your sector. For the referral, um, it's uh, after for Antoine in e-commerce. So it will come after the first buy. So uh, does your audience 
is going to review a product with a good review, maybe you can um, do some drip marketing. So you can uh, automatize um, email sequence and see uh, if your uh, audience is going to uh, launch it to their friends. Uh, you can, um, it's, it's referral, so we can think about a referral campaign, but it means that you need to know if your audience likes your product after they purchase it enough to uh, recommend it to their uh, community. All right, does it uh, answer to your question? It does. Yeah, it does. okay, nice. Uh, but every time, this is, this is metrics that you have uh, to look for uh, before you get your product market fit because if you don't have that if you don't have that uh, it's really a, a money waste and a, a time waste to go in a global uh, digital marketing campaign true okay uh, so growth no <laughs> so pirate framework so Actually, this framework need, needs, sorry, needs to be used as a tracing paper to analyze every action that you are doing. Okay, so there is an explanation. If you are doing something to increase your acquisition and your goal is to sell, so you are doing a campaign, you want to sell, and you are increasing your acquisition. So the bottom of the phone. So you can't say that your move to increase acquisition is a success if your revenue didn't increase. You know what I mean? This is why it's really important to use this framework in every action that you are doing. Because one success on acquisition is not a global success if your revenue is not going to increase. Okay, so uh, maybe maybe your goal is not revenue. Maybe your goal is notoriety and uh, people are reading your uh, your blog and everything. So this is a success. So, but you need to see all the funnel to be able to say that my move was a success. And be careful about fake metrics. Uh, I mean, this is what I said about acquisition. It's not because you get a thousand of, cursed, uh, of users in your e-commerce that this is a success. The success is how many of them bought something on your uh, e-commerce. So be really careful about the fake metrics. So all the frame, framework is based on data and how you are going to analyze it. So my advice is to do the Google Analytics class. I'm doing it right now to be sure that I understood everything when I did some stuff about acquisition and gross marketing. And, uh, and yeah, do it. It's really quick, but it's so important. So now I'm going to, to explain a little bit all the step and give some tools if I get some. So acquisition, it's simple. It's how many people you get into your website. So check your Google Analytics and do your Google Analytics class. It's really important. Activation. So you need to find what is your activation uh, step. You need to find one at least. So sometimes this when someone is putting add to a cart. This is the wow moment, you know? Um, for example, for Dropbox, everyone knows Dropbox. Uh, it's to share um, files. Their warm moment, their activation uh, was when people uploaded a file in Dropbox. So what did they do? At the subscription, at the first moment that you are putting your email in there, they are asking you to put a file in there. This is an activation, uh, activation moment. And this is how they are putting their customers to the acquisition and just right after to activation in a smooth way. All right? Uh, so the whole moment, you need to find one. Uh, Antoine, for you, 
e-commerce that will be yeah i think when they uh, when they put add to a cart like this this is a real activation so retention retention is when people are coming back um so you can you can think as i said about drip marketing so how you are going to do sequence and email campaign i think for you antoine this is like a good way uh, a, a good uh, stuff to do uh, because uh, this is a, a high price so they need to think about this and they need to be retargeting so maybe when they put their email address you can send an email like two days after, one week after, one month after, and gives them value to come back in your website and make the purchase. So for this, you get several tools. You can, uh, you can use uh, MailChimp. Uh, Clavio is a good one uh, to do uh, drip marketing. So look at it. It's not really expensive. Uh, the next step, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh... Can you explain drip marketing in, in a tip? Okay, drip marketing is automation. Automation uh, about someone that you are going to push message, but uh, automa uh, automate message. I don't know how I can say that in English, sorry. Um, yeah, it's automatic message that you are going to push to someone when they make an action in your website. Okay, for example, um, we are launching a new website for Creative Valley uh, for startups, only for startups. All the programs will be in there. So we got ADN about fashion tech. We got SDK about smart cities, for example. So when someone is going to put their email address in ADN, they are going to uh, receive five emails. Okay. But all these emails are going to be about fashion tech and how we can help them build a good startup in the fashion field. But if they are putting their email address in the smart city um, port, they are going to receive five emails about smart city and how we can help them build a good startup into the smart, uh, smart city sector. So this is what uh, drip marketing is automatic message push to your uh, users um, according to an action that they did into your website. All right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Nice. Cool. Um, so about referral and revenue, uh, sometimes it can change. Maybe sometimes revenue is before referral and vice versa. Uh, it depends on your business actually. Uh, I mean, if your uh, product is free, so revenue will be uh, after referral. Uh, for example, Plays, Fire Noon, social media, uh, they need referral before revenue, before add-ons, okay? For uh, referral, you can think of uh, Deliveroo, for example. Uh, so you can uh, send a text to your friend and you get like, uh, 10 bucks discount and things like this. Uh, to do so, uh, a easy, easy, easy tip is viral loop in your newsletter. So what is viral loop? Uh, most of the time when I get a good newsletter and I want to share it with my colleagues or friends, I need to transfer the email. But viral loop is a little, little part just at the bottom of the, of the um, newsletter that says, you want to transfer this email, this newsletter, put the email address of the, of the guy that you want to, to share with. And like this, you get the email address. So you get the data to retarget the people that saw your newsletter, all right? Um, so what about revenue then? Uh, revenue is how you are going to make money. So you need to think about upselling um, or you can sell add-ons after that. You need to increase the lifetime value of a one user. Uh, is just one purchase or after that you are going to retarget, give add-ons so the lifetime value of the user is going to increase, all right? 
And the last thing about this funnel is to be really careful. This is not linear like this. Sometimes your referral strategy, just right there, is going to impact your acquisition. And your acquisition is going to impact your retention and everything. So you need to focus on the metrics that really matters for your business. Sometimes what matters is to focus on retention before acquisition for a mobile app, for example, like I said before, all right? Everything is interconnected and everything is systemic. So you need to work on all the funnel with a global view and not be focused on each step without connecting everything. All right. Sorry. Yeah, tell me. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, earlier we were talking about um, increasing the lifetime value of your customers or for your users. I didn't quite catch that. Can you please okay. reframe it? Okay. Uh, I will take an example for, uh, um, okay. So I'm buying, I'm buying uh, a book on Amazon. So if they're not working on the lifetime value, I'm buying the book and I'm gone. It's, it's, it's finished for me. My lifetime value is like one day when I, when I pay for it. But they are going to send me email to make me purchase something else, add-ons. And they are going to make my lifetime value increase because maybe they are going to send me like all the books that are, uh, that are uh, um, on the same topics as the first one to make me purchase it. So my lifetime value is increasing. How do you uh, make your customers buy again, uh, make money again? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. OK, cool. So this is what lifetime value of a customer is. Uh, how do you make people come back and pay for it? Uh, maybe Antoine, when he is going to sell diamond, he's going to sell a, a big piece of diamond, all right? So it's going to cost a lot of money, but like in one month, two months, three months, he's going to uh, send email saying that he is uh, selling one little ring, a little bit less money, and he is going to increase his life, the lifetime value of his customers. All right, cool. Um, so it's pretty easy as well, like a uh, product market fit, you just need to think about it. I'm going to send you the template as well. What is a gross marketing strategy? You need to see all the steps of your funnel. You need to uh, define what uh, is really this stage. So acquisition, maybe it's a, uh, it's an email address for the newsletter. This is acquisition. Activation is when you add to a card. And all you can uh, know these metrics, or you can analyze these metrics. Okay. My advice do not lose yourself. Focus on what matters. So maybe acquisition, it will be a couple of things, but don't put your entire channels of acquisition right there. Just the main one. All right. So now we are going to speak about gross hacking. So what is gross hacking actually? Uh, gross hacking is rapid experimentation uh, process. That is a process of rapid experimentation, sorry. That is affecting all aspects of your business to optimize the growth. So actually this is a scientific way to, uh, to make money. And we will see uh, the process just after this. So I just want to say what gross hacking is not. Gross hacking is not about scrapping email uh, from LinkedIn, like every, everyone can, can do that right now. It's not about making automation on your Instagram profile or send email uh, to a stolen database. It's a, it's a scientific way. And this is how we can uh, put it into your business. So first, you need to define the one metric that matters. So you get all your funnel, you get, um, you get all the data you want. So you know what defines the stage of acquisition, you know what defines the stage of activation, etc. 
but you need to focus in one metric. So uh, the one metric that matters is not from me, it's from uh, Lean Startup, the book. <laughs> so the one metric that matter right now. So maybe it's retention, all right? Because you are launching your, uh, your app and um, without retention, your app won't survive. So you want, to, uh, you want to, um, to focus on this one and to be good on this one. So, or you can uh, work on this. This is the process the gross hacking process. So first you are going to brainstorm. So you know which stage you want to optimize. You are going to generate hypotheses and test to validate or not your hypothesis. So what is an hypothesis? Um, for retention, for example, it will be um, in a mobile app. Okay, we are going to send uh, a push notification every two days when the user is not uh, is not uh, online. Okay, this is an hypothesis. This is a, this is a, an hypothesis that is um, if we send push notification, they will come back. Okay. So how do we validate? We try to push uh, notification. Okay. Just after that, you have like three, four, five, a hundred of hypotheses. You need to. This one is pretty tough. Prioritize, pre, <laughs> prioritize your hypothesis. So you get two matrices to do so. I will show you one just after that. You get the pi matrix or the ice matrix. Um, for myself, I'm using the ice matrix and I will show you why. Um, after all this uh, work, so you know which hypothesis you want to test first, you can start the execution. So thanks to the work that you did, you know your goal, you have a description of the test, you have a hypothesis, you know how to verify it, uh, you know what, to, what data you want to analyze to see if your hypothesis is right or wrong, and you can execute and analyze the results. So for this, you need one, one guy or one woman that is in charge of it and that will have an overview of all the data. And you will to do a weekly updates with all your team to be sure that all the data is processed by the team. And force yourself to learn every time that you get data and you get results. So in real life, this is what gross hacking is about. Just this document. So you get a gross hack, uh, this, was in, this one is in French. I will send you an English one. So you get a gross hack to test. You get a goal. You get a hypothesis. You get a, a description. So you know uh, all about the hypothesis or you can make it happen. Uh, you know at what stage of the funnel the hypothesis is going to, uh, to act. Um, you get the KPI you want to, uh, to look for. And this is the uh, ICE matrix. So ICE is about impact, confidence, and ease. It's going to do, uh, give you a grade out of 10 or 20. And when the grade is high, you need to test it uh, really quick. So it's quite subjective, but uh, you need to start by something. So this is how you can, uh, you can uh, choose which hypothesis you are going to test. And after that, you analyze your data. So every week you get a meeting, you set up your Google Analytics to have reports and to see if it's working or not. And you get a decision after one month, two months, three months, it's up to you to know if this gross hack is going to be uh, into your gross marketing uh, strategy after all. Okay? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh about uh, the presentation, ice. Uh, so you said impact, confidence, and ease. So can you give us an example for that? Okay. okay. Uh, Matter of fact, I'm sorry. Can you give us an example to <laughs> for all the uh, this table? <laughs> okay. So better understand. Thank you. Okay. 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 So impact analysis data decision gross hack testé. Okay. Everyone uh, is thinking that uh, Airbnb uh, worked 
on a growth hack, but actually they get their product market fit before uh, testing growth hacking, all right? So they get their product. Uh, you can uh, rent a room uh, on, a, on someone's house to sleep, all right? But uh, people are not really using it. So they tried several growth hacks. And one of these growth hacks was to um, put Airbnb on Craigslist, all right? So the objective, the goal, is to increase the number of rooms rented uh, by month. OK, hypothesis is they are using uh, another platform uh, that is more known, uh, they will succeed. So description, uh, they just uh, describe everything. So uh, we are going to put the price, we are going to put pictures. And actually, they asked photographer to get these pictures to have beautiful pics. Uh, etap, uh, so stage on the funnel, it's acquisition. Because this is all they are coming to their website. But the goal is revenue. This is why you need all the funnel to see if your acquisition hack succeed with the revenue, all right? KPIs, so there is, I believe, two KPIs in their strategy. All many people uh, came to their website and the revenue at the end of the funnel, all right? Uh, how do you uh, do your prioritization? I did it. Uh, impact, so this is subjective, out of 10, how do you think this gross hack is going to impact your strategy? So uh, a lot of people were on Craigslist at this moment. Uh, I don't know if it's still a thing to be on Craigslist. So I would say it's eight out of 10. Confidence. Um, I don't really know Craigslist. So I don't know if people are really renting room in this one. So I would say it's average five out of 10. All right, is, so is it easy to do this gross hack? You just have to copy and paste your, uh, your uh, data, your uh, the price uh, description and everything on Craigslist. Like, I mean, it's just uh, time, but that's all. So it's pretty easy, I would say nine out of 10. All right, so I said eight, five, nine. So thanks to this, you get a great general grade and you get all your hypotheses. So I believe that they are older, but I don't know about this. All right. So they, get, they are doing this job for every hypothesis they get to increase their revenue. And they get five. And this is the highest grade. So this is the one. This is the gross hacks they are going to test in, in the first place. All right. And every week, they are going to, uh, to see if people are coming more into the website thanks to this hack and if they are increasing their revenue and they are doing it for like one month, two months. And if it's working, they are still doing it. Is it, is it clear enough? Yeah, totally. Thank you. Yeah? Perfect? Yeah. yeah, very good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, that was the same thing for uh, Dropbox. Dropbox, uh, everyone was putting their email address, but no one was uploaded uh, anything because they had to come back in the website and everything. So they tried to uh, put the uploading thing with the subscription. Like this, they uploaded right after the subscription and retention was there. They were using the, the thing. All right? Cool. Um, so I think you got most of what I said. So what is product market fit? What is growth marketing? And what is growth hacking? What's the difference between them and why it is complementary? So you are doing your growth marketing global strategy. After that, you can implement growth hacks to optimize your growth. So actually, if you have three things to remember from this workshop, it's that without product market fit, don't launch any growth strategy at all. It will be a waste of time and a waste of money. 
there is no witch in gross marketing and there is no witch in uh, gross hacking. It's all about data and mindset. So you need to test, to, to test, sorry. You need to test, analyze all the data, iterate, analyze all the data and see what is working and what is not working, okay? So you need to be uh, data driven. All right, and the last thing is you need to think global then specific. If you are just thinking about acquisition and not all the funnel, uh, you are going to have a lot of what we call churn. So churn is when someone is leaving the funnel and you won't, uh, and you won't uh, know where the, the users, the customers left the funnel. So you need to have all your funnel in mind before trying to do gross hack about uh, acquisition, activation, and everything after that, all right? So I will send you these templates. There is a one about gross hacking. I didn't show you uh, this one, but this is an impact on the rest of the funnel. So when you, you make your decision, this is a gross marketing. You can see here, I just, added the churn, so the percent of people that is leaving your funnel after they activate. And just right there, you get the template about the product market fit. So all you can know that you get your product market fit and you can start a gross marketing campaign. All right. So it's all for me. I told you about what I know in gross marketing, gross hacking and product market fits. Um, if you have any type of question, I'm going to uh, cut my uh, screen uh, share and we can speak about either your product market fit, your question about gross hacking, gross marketing, anything. All right. Yeah, it's right there. Does anyone got a, a question about uh, what I said? Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh... So it's my verb from Bull Tape. Um, so we already talked uh, with Luca about uh, my issue on the product market fit. So um, just um, quick info. So we, we got some traffic, um, some organic traffic um, with people who are staying on the website. And uh, so there is um, a low rate of bounce rate, uh, but we don't have conversion. Um, so um, the, the main issue now is to define if the, if the, um, if it's the right people who are coming on the website or, um, uh, or if there is a reason why they don't convert because uh, the message is pretty clear and pretty known. Um, so yeah, that's my um, trouble uh, for now. Yeah, yeah. So um, with Maeva, uh, we analyze uh, Google Analytics, and uh, actually the bounce rate wasn't that high. So people were uh, understood what the e-commerce was doing. Uh, so I feel like the conversion is a trouble. Uh, so maybe you need to to try. Uh, to change your activation. Uh, maybe it's your, uh, because they don't put add to card. You don't have a, like a, a big rate of, uh, yeah. of quitting. So this is about your activation. So the conversion, uh, and uh, this is all about test. You are going to test uh, different things. Maybe it's a price. Maybe it's the brand that you are showing in your e-commerce that is not fitting with the, uh, with, um, with what your customers want. You need to try, analyze, and every week do weekly updates about what you found. But uh, okay. it may be the message, it may be the price. Um, they, they are not adding to cart, so it's not uh, the entire funnel. You need, yeah, we need, a, we need to, to do some tests, running some tests about the price maybe. Okay. Maeva, maybe you can do uh, 
a quick uh, tip like uh, integrating a chat on your website. I don't know if you have it already. And, uh, yeah, and push. I, I, uh, I already did, but nobody is responding. Uh, and, we have chat bot, but uh, nobody is interested to, to chat with us. And if you can push a, a quick survey to, to really try to capture or so if uh, the people are really interested in your portfolio or you know if there is anything missing. Well, I, I did a survey, but it's not directly on the website. I will do pop up um, okay. in, in the next few days. But I did a, a survey a few days ago on Instagram uh, who people was uh, coming on the on the website and the main uh, info that uh, we we got that it was there is no not enough brand yet and um, and uh, yeah not enough brand. Um, and some people were more interesting in uh, low pricing, um, so uh, it's uh, it's a bit, it's a beginning of an answer, but um, mm. I will link into that uh, with more um, data. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, if if you tell me that the message is pretty clear and the bounce rate is showing that. Uh, it can be the it can be the price. It can be the price. Yeah, you need mm -hmm. you need to taste it. Maybe you you can put other brands on your uh, Shopify that is less ex less expensive, and see how the uh, how your users are going to interact with your website. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, okay. we tried the chatbot the chatbot, <laughs> but it didn't work <laughs> at all. <laughs> no, no, no. Fortunately. All right. Um, is there any type of question? Yes, I have a, a question. I'm Lucy from uh, La Galpa. Yeah. Uh, I haven't launched my project yet, so it's more of a theoretical question. But uh, you were talking about um, about referral, and I was interested to know, like, for example, for e-commerce site, how can you see what is your referral, how you, how it works? Um, so, um, so you can put some add-on uh, on your website. For example, uh, I spoke with a, a dating app, the CMO of a dating app uh, last week. Uh, he told me about his referral campaign. So, when you are um, when you are um, setting up your profile, uh, there is a couple of questions that you need to answer and you have uh, the right to send a question to your friends and your friends are answering the question. And like this, so it's like a gamification and uh, all the friends know about this dating app. So I feel like maybe you can do a referral campaign on e-commerce um, with an add-on button. For example, when you are in your product, there is a little button to share a product to your friend to get their opinion on the product. And uh, all the share link are going to be tracked by your, uh, by your um, Google Analytics. Okay. They will know that they, they came from the sharing uh, link. So this is how you can track your referral. OK. okay this is one example. There is a, I think, uh, other example, but this yeah, is the one that sure. in my mm -hmm. mind. Okay, thank you. No worries. Yeah, Lucy, yeah. if you if if you want, uh, I have two more examples for that. Yeah, uh, please. Yeah, I I installed two two systems. One one is pretty easy because uh, in Shopify ecosystem you have quite a lot of them. Is uh, you. You thank your customers if they, they just bring some uh, some more people in your in your customer list, and like they get 50 euro. For, for my case, it's like that. They get 50 euro if they bring you a new a new customer that also gets 50 euro. So okay. you, you have a good synergy on that. And I also have uh, I've just set it up uh, and uh, implementing it uh, this week, uh, and also evaluating the net promoter score. So I'm asking the, the customers after the purchase, after two or three weeks, uh, if they would uh, recommend my brand and my products to their friends. And so you, and you can track this figure 
uh, across the time to, to see if it's uh, still good or lower or higher so, so you can evaluate your performance. Okay, really interesting. Thank you. Nice. Thanks, Arna. Vika, I have a question. Uh, I well understood all this, what you explained regarding B2C, but if you are on B2B or even on B2B2C, how you made that? How we would do that? Are you... Because it's... Uh, because uh, I, I really well understood uh, that if you have a app or a marketplace, okay, it's uh, you can check, make some modification, check with Google Analytics and so on. But if you're on B2B, for instance, so how you do that? And uh, do you make the same uh, the same step of acquisition in all, all these things? Or how do you do that? I would say like, it depends on your business because sometimes you are in, a, when you are in B2B, you still have, um, for example, Alibaba, B2B uh, platform uh, for any kind of things. But their targets, even if it's business, they are uh, huge. There are a lot of business that are going to Alibaba. So all the step of the funnel will be the same. But um, if you are a local producer and uh, your uh, B target is uh, three restaurants, it's different. You know what I mean? So uh, it will depends on the number of uh, customers that you have. So maybe we can, uh, we can like try to, to set up everything in a one-to-one -one session or something uh, to see, yeah, I need more data about how many people, uh, what's your uh, funnel right now, do you have your product market fit and everything? And we will be able to set up, uh, but for now I need more data. But, it will really depends of uh, what you are selling and to um, to the amount of targets you have, even if it's business. Okay. All right. Yeah. But you're totally right. That is more appropriate for a B two C actually. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, does anyone get a question? Yeah, I have a question about the uh, product market fit. Yeah. So, um, uh, so uh, do we agree that product market fit uh, doesn't equal uh, launching your product to the market? Is that so? Or do we, or do, uh, when you talk about market fit, yeah, that we have we have already launched our product, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because in our case, for example. Uh, the development of the technology is quite uh, quite expensive and quite uh, quite hard. So so we approach our product market with, with surveys, etc. Okay. And and, um, and we are willing to um, uh, so currently we are willing to project our. Uh, our OKRs, our KPIs of uh, user acquisition, user retention, etc. So what we thought about is to create a, a, a fake door MVP and to run a small marketing uh, campaign so we can collect data, so we can project our revenue streams, our, our marketing strategies, uh, even our MVP planning. So how do you think about this? So, um, would you like to to share it right now, or? I, yeah, I, no problem. No problem. Okay. So, what I'm thinking about this. Um, so, actually, you don't have to launch your uh, final product to get your product market fit. Um, what I was saying is, uh, survey is a, a really good uh, approach to get your first data about where I'm going, you know? But uh, the data that you will get in your MVP or prototype, or that's like, uh, oh, I can say that, brut. Uh, that is, I mean, like, that is real data. This is all your user are going to interact with uh, your, uh, your uh, MVP, your solution. Um, I can I can say that I love I re raw data. <laughs> Merci, Chiara. I can say that I love reading books, and actually I love it. When I get a book, 
I'm always reading it. But I'm not going to Amazon to look for a book every two weeks. So maybe you survey we say that I'm a book lover, but uh, your raw data, we say that I read two, three books per year. You know what, I, what I'm saying? This is great, but actually you don't have to, to get your final product. Uh, MVP or uh, MVP or prototype, if your prototype is digital and you can have your data, will work as well. Okay, cool. You get it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. But you, you have to get your data. Like, if it's all about survey, uh, maybe someone else will say it's it's okay, but I, I I actually don't think so. You you need like raw data, like about people uh, surfing in your in your website. Uh, how many pages are going to to look at? Uh, are they going to to buy? to purchase and everything. Okay, right. cool, cool. Anwar, if, if I can. If I yeah, can yeah of course. Uh, I, I saw a lot of um, startups or software companies that showcase just a small part of their MVP, uh, just straight on their front page or, uh, or you drop your email to, to get access to, to, to yeah. a short piece of uh, and and they just list you in a waiting list. Yeah. And uh, and even they activate some referrals. So if you want to to win some places in the in the waiting list, you have to refer some friends to to win some place. There are some some uh, amazing apps to do that. And uh, and those guys were quite successful. They they can create some some good uh, energy from uh, from that system. That, okay. That, that could yeah. Be good yeah. For you. Yeah, yeah, this, quite, quite insightful. Yeah, this is actually a good way to get data to see if people are willing to 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 get to do some referral and to share your project. Yeah, quite yeah. insightful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arnold. Thank you very much. Peter. Okay, nice. Uh, do you have any other questions? Uh, just before everyone is leaving, uh, I. Think Kiara, yeah. Kiara is going to send you um, a feedback, feedback uh, questionnaire, a feedback uh, sondage. Please, uh, can you can you uh, fill it? Uh, we are looking to try our product market fit right there, <laughs> trying to do the best workshop that we can. Uh, maybe that was a little bit too theoretical. Uh, maybe you need uh, three workshops, one on product market fit, one on gross marketing, and one on gross hacking. Please be honest. Uh, it's really helpful for us to improve ourselves. Uh, that was the first time that I was doing this workshop about this topic. So uh, it will help us a lot if you can fit it. Mm, and yeah, I think that's it. She just put it in the, in the chat. Yeah, because last time I uh, sent you a survey, only Caroline actually answered. <laughs> so please, this time, uh, Caroline. <laughs> we have you, so we can improve our workshops. Okay, nice. Um, for those who are in Station F, I will be there all day long. Um, we can talk about this. Otherwise, you get my Slack, you get my email address. Uh, I will be very, very pleased to have your uh, feedback about this, even if it's uh, a punchy one. Uh, I need that. I need that sometimes. So go for it. And uh, see you soon. Thank you, Luca. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. Thank you. Giorgio. Hello. Yeah, I need. A, we need to set up a call, man. Yes, of because course. Oh, I didn't hear you. Sorry. Anytime, anytime. Okay, I'm going to send you. Uh, I'm going to send you a, a message by Slack. All right. Okay, deal, deal. Thank right. you. See you. See you. Bye. See you. Thank you. See ya. Up, up. Lucas? Ouais. Est-ce que tu pourrais m'envoyer euh...